Welcome back for this uh, next episode of Kepler Basics. This time we're going to be looking at GPU arrays. Now, since we're working with data actually on the GPU this time, uh, we're going to need an OpenGL context, and that means just starting the Kepler REPL. So that's what I'm going to do here. See that we're going to get this little window come up, but we're not using it, so I'm going to minimize it away for now. Now, last time, we were doing things like this. We were making C arrays. Um, and optionally, again, we, we were providing data and potentially specifying types and dimensions as well. But if we didn't, we were getting uh, foreign arrays um, where it would pick the type for us, something sensible, and calculate the dimensions. Now, it would be nice to be able to do something similar on the GPU. And so that's what we've got is a very similar syntax. Uh, so gtest now is a GPU array. It's gone and seen the smallest type uh, so the smallest primitive type it could use without loss of precision on this data, seeing what the dimensions should be, and this extra bit of information backed by a buffer. Now, what that means is that in, in OpenGL, it doesn't have this abstraction for uh, GPU arrays. It has buffers. Now, buffers are large, potentially large, blocks of untyped memory. So you can just ask for this kind of chunk of untyped memory. Now, although technically you could throw anything in there, most of the time what we're doing is putting these large streams of um, contiguous, similarly typed data. Now, this is pretty much by definition an array. So we're going to use the same abstraction. So let's play with a test and g-test and see where these things are similar and where they're different. Now we've got test and g-test, and one of the things we were able to do with test that was good uh, was use a ref, sorry, a ref c on it um, to get a particular element out of the array. Now this isn't something we allow on the GPU array for the reason that we don't want to give this impression that a uh, transferring very small bits of data like this has a low cost. Uh, it has a very low cost to do with these foreign arrays, but with something on the GPU, there's a lot of uh, synchronization and state going on that makes that quite costly. Um, one of the other things we could do, though, uh, with test was pull it. So we're going to say pull G on test, and we get the data. And we want to be able to do the same thing with our GPU arrays. So this comes all the way from the GPU data and back into this. And we were able to push as well. So we were able to say push G, and we were able to push data to test, or in this case to G test, and then we will have pulled them again. We can see that those changes have happened on their respective places. We're also able to use subsequence. Though before it was subsequence C and now it's subsequence G on G test. And we get a new GPU array, again maxed by buffer. These can also be backed by textures, but that's going to be another video where I explain that entirely. As with the subsequences of C array, they're sharing memory, so modifying one will modify the other. So do bear that in mind. Pull G and push G are great, but one other pull mechanism is enabled for GPU array. Is we can kind of think of um, these different places in memory. Um, like we can say, okay, we've got data in this, we've got data in C, and we've got data on the GPU. And it's almost like a hierarchy. We pass from one to the next. The list data goes through C to get to the GPU. And we've got this um, ability to pull all the way from the GPU uh, down into list. But some of the times we only want to go down one level. So we can do pull 1G, and what we get is a C array. And we can also um, push a C array to a GPU array. And that's the thing. So we can, we can, with this, we can move through all the different layers quite easily. Oh, that's the other thing I didn't mention. You can also make a GPU array, but only pass in a C array. And it's going to extract all the information straight from the C array, which makes it very cheap. Um, all it's having to do is then upload the data. And that's nice and fast. Also, one of the things, like I say, we don't allow a ref C to be used on these, but we do allow um, this operation. So we can say with GPU array as C array, and then we specify a name and we specify the GPU array we want to use. And now inside this scope, we will have a C array. And so we can do all the normal things that we do with C arrays, 
like, yeah, like get a rep on it so we get the second item. It's two, which kind of makes sense since uh, pull G of G test is all twos. So let's do something slightly different. Let's set F the second position to be 12. Now when we pull G test, you can see that that value has changed. And so inside this scope, we basically have this point as a GPU memory. Um, but don't try and be sneaky. Don't try and use it outside of this block because it won't work. This is actually all you need to know about GPU arrays to start with. There are lots of more advanced things you can do with um, especially packing multiple arrays into the same buffer and things like this. And that's uh, for another video, the buffer video. Um, we're also going to be handing the data in here to shaders, to our GPU code, via a mechanism called a stream, which allows us to pack some of this data together. Um, and we're going to see that in, again, a later video. But the next stop I would like to do is actually make a slight diversion, and I want to talk about types that we can use between Keppel and on the GPU. All right, thanks a lot. Ciao.